Hello guys, it's amazing to be here. Thanks, thanks so much for having me. My name is Tomek and uh, you'll be seeing a sneak peek of, of a talk which is going to happen in about two weeks time at Elm Europe. So if the talk, it's, it's, it's pretty broad, so it's not, it's not like language specific, but if, it's, if, if it gets to Elmi, then just, uh, <laughs> just, uh, yeah, just shout, well, well, correct me, and I'll, I'll be happy to explain this stuff. Uh, so yeah, but by the way, I needed to, oops, no, this is not what I wanted. Uh, I needed to change the, the, the name of the talk to how micro apps help us stay flexible. Also, uh, I work, I actually used to work at Listable. Uh, I still work there, but we're now called Kalo, so another change. And, uh, <laughs> and before, uh, I, I always forget this at the end of the talk, so I'll already say, say it at the very beginning. We're hiring, we're, we're looking for, uh, we're looking like crazy for, for amazing engineers like yourselves. Uh, we've got two offices, one of them in uh, London, one of them in San Francisco, but we're also open to, uh, to kind of remote or semi remote work. So if you're up to it, go ahead. I don't think we're, yeah, if you look for Listable, you'll sure, sure, surely find us. I, I, I don't know about Kalo because the rebrand just happened like two days ago and I don't think Google has even indexed us. So yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, that would be it for the introduction. But now you've noticed a couple of things changed at the at the title slide, and this is quite a common thing. You probably know this that in the tech industry things change like like mad. And uh, the, the the problem with this is uh, that humans, at least that's what that's what uh, the basically the inventor of programming. The uh, she's called Grace Hopper. You probably know her. Uh, she, she said loads of wise things, and one of one of them is that humans are allergic to change. They they they've always been saying like, we've always been doing it like this. We don't want to we don't want to change. So uh, let's. I, I just want to uh, want to focus this talk on, on that on how to kind of why to uh, stay flexible, why to uh, resist this kind of. Resistance to change, uh, because well, resistance to change is something you you might you might probably you probably know by another word from Twitter. Anyone does anyone have a, have an idea what what this is? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's 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 it. So yeah, we all we, we all know this. We uh, we all kind of uh, no nobody likes it, but but as well as that, we are all kind of we've we've admitted. Uh, we kind of agreed to the fact that JS fatigue is there, and that's kind of the world we're living in. But this is this doesn't this doesn't need to be true actually. And and I'd uh, I'd like to start uh, with uh, with a story about uh, about how Amazon, a uh, little online bookstore, uh, kind of coped with this with this problem. Yeah. So they they started out with a uh, with a simple online bookstore. They were one of the first ones in the in the in the uh, area, so they kind of whoops, they kind of started uh, uh, expanding uh, their service, adding more and more features. Uh, of course, user authentication, shopping carts, uh, showcase. Uh, they started selling more and more things, and suddenly they kind of faced a, a situation. Yeah, they faced fatigue basically. So they they had this uh, this really big system which handled all these things. Uh, for well, it, it, uh, orders orders kind of exploded. There was there was really lots lot, lots of stuff that the the system needed to, to cope with, uh, and they noticed that well, kind of adding things to the system was relatively easy, but changing things things in the system was super expensive. So uh, they actually did, uh, they uh, the the CEO of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, uh, or Bezos, however you pronounce this, uh, came up with a very like uh, controversial idea to take a, to because they were kind of uh, struggling under the load of all this stuff that they need to fix and change. But uh, he decided to take a step back to say, "Stop! We, we're not we're not going to work on those changes. Instead of that, uh, we're going to kind of separate to, to kind of put our system on a on a very lean platform uh, and and uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry." <laughs> And uh, and start separating the different dom domains. So, for example, authentication should be should be handled by by instead of the the huge system which was so difficult to maintain by a very little application, very easy to to develop, 
and they kind of communicated through this through this uh, through this platform. So, yeah, it it did take lots of effort to get there, but but uh, in the end, they they uh, they came up with a with a structure of lots of di di different little programs in a kind of flat, uh, no no hierarchy. They just kind of kind of communicate with each other. Each one is equally important. Each one is responsible for only one thing, and they call this thing microservices. I, this might have been someone else who called this, but they were definitely the first ones who, who really kind of dived into this stuff and and uh, and uh, well went went all in. Um, so yeah, what happened? What, what happened next? Um, it it suddenly it suddenly it it turned out that uh, the system is incredibly. Flexible, so so you you can basically replace these parts very easily. If something gets like stale, difficult to maintain, you can write a new one in a in a in a like more appropriate technology using more appropriate tools. It was easy to uh, to throw things away when they were no longer needed. So they started expanding to different markets, and this is what you what you probably know Amazon as today. So they they don't only do. Uh, they don't only sell books and videos. They also have a music platform, like kind of like Spotify. They also have food deliveries, like Deliveroo. They also have, uh, uh, well, they they basically have everything. Amazon, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So it it turned out that that uh, that the system is very flexible and it and it uh, it fits. Kind of very well into into the, the the environment that we're we're at at the moment. So we're in at the moment. So yeah, all this, well, the society everywhere, technological progress uh, is happening, and all our businesses, all our projects, uh, also our side project, they need to kind of stay on top, be, uh, remain interesting, so that people kind of buy it. Everything needs to needs to needs to adapt to the to the situation. So yeah, you might. Uh, after well, after here, uh, oh, there's there's one more punchline to this uh, about Amazon. It actually turned out that uh, this this system turned out to be so flexible that uh, at the moment, I don't know if you if you know this, but uh, seventy percent of Amazon Amazon's income, even more than that, comes not from selling books, not from uh, not from uh, deliveries, but from running. These services. So they've, they've, some of those systems are known as, for example, S S3 that we probably, uh, some of us probably use to deploy our apps. We pay Amazon for this, very little money. But it turns out that uh, that uh, this has been so successful that the, the business kind of found its way to the to the best, like most most uh, profitable niche in the in the whole array of things. So yeah, after after hearing this story, you might say, yeah, not bad, mate. Good thing to like uh, say at a pub and inf impress our friends, but I want to tell you uh, that it's not just an impressive like story that you could tell your friends, but this is actually a, a, a way, a, 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 an idea, a very general general idea that that I'm pretty sure everyone can apply in some uh, in in. Uh, uh, well, to, to some part of, of 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 their projects, because staying flexible is is relevant for for everyone. So, uh, yeah, followed by this like far-fetched story, I've got I've got a couple of uh, a couple of very like real-world stories of projects that I'm or have been or I have been involved in. Uh, I've got many of them. So uh, before every story, I'll I'll try to ask you a couple of questions to to uh, to determine whether to tell that story or to skip to the next one because there are just too many to, to cover <laughs> yeah so yeah let's let's start with with uh, with Kalo the, what what we're doing right now at our at, at our company so uh, yeah I'd I'd, uh, I'd like to ask you how how, how many of you uh, are working at at their kind of day job with the with the technology they are like most pumped about <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, I guess all the others, uh, pr probably similar to to me, uh, are, are working with a technology which is which is kind of good enough, that does the job, but uh, but would love to 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 uh, to pick some other stuff. Like, uh, well, for me, this like dream environment is is Elm, and this is this is the the the, the reason why I'm standing standing here in front of you. Uh, so, yeah, this seems relevant, but I'm, I also make make double sure. Uh, do many of you work in, in teams of 
above five, six people, five, six engineers. Yeah, cool. So yeah, there, there are quite a bunch. So let's 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 go ahead with this one. Um, yep. So yeah, there, there we were at 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 the the office of what was then called Listable, now, nowadays Kalo. Uh, and we were kind of we 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 got this like really well organized React code base. Uh, it it started out uh, three years ago when React was a very like cutting really cutting edge technology. You've got lots of tooling around this. Some of that we're going to open source soon, hopefully because it's 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 really amazing stuff. Uh, but but uh, yeah, we were we were we were kind of discussing what what's going to to be to, to happen with uh, with with our code base from now on, which direction we'll, we'll be heading. And someone brought up this tweet. Yeah, Web, WebAssembly came came up in uh, in in a previous talk already by the Vue AR guys, amazing one. Um, and this kind of co coincided with with the fact that we we're also having a. Uh, we're also kind of struggling to squeeze the best performance out of out of out of uh, out of our applications. So, yeah, what what, what we realize is that uh, WebAssembly is already uh, ready in all four major browsers. Uh, so uh, soon enough, we'll be able to run uh, run our apps at a basically at a native speed in the browser uh, but unless the apps are written in JavaScript because then you can't compile to WebAssembly basically um, the other piece of news was uh, kind of from the from the L, L community I also learned uh, talking to people that Elm uh, Elm is built in such a way that uh, it's it's basically uh, very easy to to run an application on multiple cores, so it's like super. Uh, all, all the application's logic uh, can be distributed across basically infinite cores, uh, infinite cores, because of like immutability and the way that event handling is is structured. So there was like low hanging fruit, but we we were kind of. Uh, well, not to say stuck with React, but but very like very much inve we've inv we had invested a lot of a lot of our, our time and stuff in React. So, yeah, we uh, the backend team was uh, facing the same problems. So they they basically used a, a solution which is already there. So they they started porting the backend to microservices, just like uh, just just like what what Amazon is doing. Uh, so we kind of decided to take a look at that and experiment a bit. What what if we mapped the exact same way of working, the same idea to, to the front end? Uh, and this is this is what we came up uh, came up with. So uh, this this is basically my uh, also my my presentation ticker, which is measuring time of, of, for my application. We built this to uh, to kind of experiment with the idea of microservices. On the front end, outside of our uh, outside of our, of, our, of our code base. So, yeah, it's it's a it's a fairly simple application. We just we just set, for example, at the second second, the the color, the back background color should change to teal, and at the twentieth second, the background color should change to I don't know, blue. Let's say. And then we say we say ready to roll, and there it goes. So there's probably nothing unusual in the in, in the application at first sight, uh, but uh, but uh, it's it's actually written. It's actually three different applications uh, cooperating with each other. So th so this is a bit of a contrived exa example, but we we just wanted to prove that it's possible to uh, and easy uh, to to. Uh, to have three different, app well, many different applications like microservices uh, connected together into a single experience, something that the user does uh, does not uh, does not notice in in any uh, uh, well in any way which 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 might be uh, frustrating for for them. So if we look under the hood. We've, uh, we've actually got custom element in in here, so this is this is a part, the, the stable part of of uh, of the web component specification, uh, and we've got we've got one application called timer timer display. This is uh, this is what's what's ticking in there right right there. So for example, we can 
we can actually experiment here in the in the in the console with this as well. So basically, the the attributes that we see we see here, the default color, the the color breakpoints, the pause attributes, these are pretty much the same as a a URL of a normal application. So it's like input input data, uh, which which uh, which the application is interpreting. So uh, when one one micro app wants to wants to uh, change the state of the other of the other one, it can pass data down to it uh, to, to the other one through uh, attributes or, or, or properties. Uh, and the other one, uh, the other application is kind of responsible for itself to to to, to react. So we can say this. Uh, uh, the JSON got screwed up, but yeah, basically. <laughs> Uh, basically, you, uh, you you probably get the idea. And what what uh, you might ask what happens in the other in the other direction when the application wants to uh, communicate back to those to those uh, to those other parts of, of the whole system? Um, yeah, let's un unbreak this. Yeah, probably we we edited too much. <laughs> Technology, <laughs> yeah, cool. So uh, uh, when when the when the micro app wants to communicate with with the rest of the system, it sends events up, uh, like custom events back back up. So it's it's basically uh, it's basically pretty much the React or Elm way of thinking with declarative declarative uh, views and top down uh, top down. Like one unidirectional data flow, but applied at a at a at a higher level between applications, not inside applications. Uh, yeah, I, I I'm not sure we have the time to to look into the M code because this is basically it's probably going to be more interesting for uh, for M engineers. So the M is is powering this uh, this. Uh, this uh, kind of kind of control panel here, and this the, the timer is a is a is a is a React application uh, deep inside. But what might be interesting for you is the is is this kind of this this uh, slim platform that you know from the slide about microservices as well. So it's uh, we call this an app shell, just like the progressive web apps uh, community. Uh, Calls the kind of the thing that loads the apps because basically it, it does exactly the same. So it takes it takes the uh, the applications, the the micro apps, like color uh, color. Uh, wait, the uh, the micro apps are timer controls and no, this is this is the adapter and this is the shell. So it takes the applications like timer controls uh, and timer display. It wires things up, and it, it actually surprises us how easy it is, how natural it is, to uh, to connect these things, uh, these things to one another. Um, yeah. So uh, there's there's also one more goodie that we that we uh, that we discovered in in the meantime. Uh, let's just get to grips with the keyboard here. Uh, yeah. So uh, so basically, what we can do now is. Uh, throttle the networks, the network uh, performance. Okay, I think I need to zoom out a bit. Yeah, so let, let's see how it how it behaves at a with a two G uh, with a weak two G. No, wait, let's let's make it a uh, yeah regular so weak two G uh, connection, and let's hard reload the thing. And keep in mind that there's, act there's actually three. Hey, this doesn't seem uh, slow at all. <laughs> Too good, yeah. Shit, I have no idea what, what it's. Oh, okay, now it's now it's how it how it actually behaves. So it's it's actually three. Fr uh, you need to be aware that that it's three frameworks that are being downloaded here because. Uh, there's there's React for the timer controls, uh, for the timer display. There's Elm for the uh, for the timer controls, and because we we, we needed uh, to 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 get set up really quickly with the UI components, we also we also download Polymer to power all those all those little things. So for for a, for a single application, 
for, for a single application, there's really loads of stuff that's, that's being loaded, but, but the user uh, sees stuff almost instantly. And that's because uh, the app shell, the, 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 the part which is responsible for wiring things together, uh, this, this can be uh, statically rendered at build time. It's, it's what, we, what, we, what we do here. So it's basically delivered as stat static HTML. That's possible thanks to this kind of micro apps approach. And then what we, what we struggle with in, in production apps to do code splitting, to do it right, to, to, to make it like seamless for the user, we basically get this for free with micro apps, because every micro app is kind of conceptually something which which loads, uh, which loads separately. We we we're also we're also able to ship micro apps uh, separately, so so we don't have this uh, this problem that. Uh, uh, we've got a feature ready for a client demo, but but there's, for example, uh, the master branch is broken, so so we need to wait for other guys to to uh, to fix this until and this holds up with the release. Or uh, we don't have builds which which uh, take two hours to complete because of all the tests. It's like little applications which are really easy to uh, to understand, to develop, to deploy. To throw away if we no longer need them, to replace if there's if there's a better technology available. So it's really a very very flexible way of working. Oh, and there's, there's one more there's one more goodie which we, which we're not yet uh, kind of considering, but we we love it that the option is there. Uh, We've got basically a collection of, of 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 very tiny apps, which are basically features. Yeah, feature feature by feature, like for example, screens, different screens in the application. And uh, because we're we're a B two B app, we're a B two B platform. There's quite often very uh, different clients have different expectations. So what we can do is like put together a different set of, of micro apps and ship one set of micro apps to one client and another set of micro apps to another client. So this is, uh, or, or replace, for example, replace part of the application just just for, for one client. So this is really a, a, an, an amazing flexibility that this, this, uh, this approach opened up for us. Uh, cool, let's, let's get back to our, uh, to our stories. Yeah, this was some funny gifts that I <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, so everyone was supposed to be waiting uh, for this live demo to happen, and then I should have announced that it's time for the live demo. <laughs> yeah, so that's I'm not, I'm I'm not really good with these slides yet. Uh, I also I also do my best to end every story with with something kind of. Uh, with a good like quote that uh, sticks in the mind and that you can tweet, but it was difficult for this one because uh, it's not really microservices. It's it's a it's a very nice mapping because it's exactly the same thing, but there's no such thing as microservices on the front end. As well as that, web components are, uh, as you probably know, they they are not production ready yet. There's there's only one uh, or two. Uh, features, kind of a subset of the web component specification that can be used across browsers and polyfilled in a very lightweight way. Uh, that's why we end up with a less less uh, less catchy connect micro apps into a single experience with custom elements. And uh, I, I also have to add that uh, custom elements are only kind of one option for this. Just like for microservices, the microservices can communicate over HTTP, they can communicate over WebSockets, so this is just the platform. It's the mindset that's, impor that's important, it's the flexibility. Uh, cool, I think we've got time for uh, two more stories and get, them and, and get through them real quickly. Uh, so, yeah, basically, uh, which, which of these are, is, is uh, kind of more interesting for, for you. I, I've got three stories left, but I think we've, we've, we've just ha we just have time for two. Uh, one of them is about uh, uh, starting development before the design is ready, and a, a very nice workflow which, which comes out of this out of this micro-apps approach. That's another project that, that I'm part of. It's kind of a rocket science thing. Uh, then uh, kind of the, lo the lowdown from, an, from another, uh, so what caveats to avoid and, and what, to, what to watch out for. And the third one is kind of a, 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 a hack project, which, uh, which would normally have been really like, time consuming to do, but I only had a weekend. And thanks to micro apps, I managed to do this over one single weekend. So, <laughs> uh, or perhaps science. rocket science. Okay, let's start with rocket science then. It's also actually similar to the, to the Vue AR stuff. So, uh, 
this might be a very nice mapping. So this is a project that I'm doing. I, I basically have, have a degree in architecture, so building houses. And I've got lots of very interesting friends in there. Uh, and with, with two of them, we've, we've started a site project uh, which, uh, which will basically allow people to make th things for themselves without the, without the hassle. So it's like DIY without having to, 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 to sort things out, to, to, to design these things. And it's like really, just like Medium focuses on the experience of, of uh, writing uh, articles, uh, writing content and reading content, we're focusing on the experience of making things. So we're just, we're just trying to, to, to do this, uh, to make this as, uh, as, as pleasant as possible. So there's this, uh, but, but, but this is, uh, all of us are very like busy, busy people. So we have just, uh, just, uh, just like a couple of hours a week to, to, to hack away on this stuff. But we need, we need to come up with a, with a, um, uh, with a rough prototype, with a rough kind of MVP kind of thing in a very efficient manner. So we're also distributed. We, we rarely meet. Uh, so. There's, uh, there's another guy working on the, on the design and kind of iterating through different prototypes, but I'm already working on, uh, on kind of implementing the different things. For example, this, uh, it, it, it actually feels very nice. It's streaming from my phone, uh, a way to kind of view 3D models as if your, 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 your phone was a window that you kind of move around and it's kind of, uh, yeah, very, uh, a very rough uh, pre-version of, I don't know virtual virtual reality. <laughs> yeah, and there's there's also another another bit which uh, which we're working on. Unfortunately, again, it doesn't work on iOS because Safari still doesn't support uh, web uh, web RTC. But there's this uh, this uh, real time image processing module which uh, captures drawings and then uh, in real time you see how they turn into vectors. And these vectors then uh, then turn into uh, kind of real things. Like, for example, in, in this case, uh, the, uh, the 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 draw, you can draw something, scan it with your with your phone, and then turn it into into a uh, cookie cutter. This is a kind of special kind of cookie cutter where you yeah cut things out and press the shape into them. So uh, uh, yeah, basically the the nice thing about this is uh, all this all this uh, kind of framework around this. This is this is not an app. This is this is just a wireframe uh, c uh, created in a in a very like rapid prototyping environment. It's, it's kind of similar to Sketch. It's called Atomic. Really nice thing. But this is this is done by by the other guy, and I'm already working on our core uh, core technology, uh, which is kind of these these different bits and those bits that are kind of ready. You can already like pull into that sketch like experience and ship it as a as a uh, prototype, which you can then test with potential users. So it's like it's a very flexible way of working when you have uh, different things happening in in in, in parallel. Uh, cool. So we've got we've got two projects left. Uh, let's just get back to the to the GIF that I also forgot. Uh, Oops. Oh no, I've closed my slides. There we go, these are my slides. Yeah, so <laughs> that should have been before the live demo, the, the, the other live demo. Uh, so this, this story was all about kind of staying super flexible and uh, yeah, in, enabling ways of working which, were, which, 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 which weren't possible before. Uh, so the other two stories are uh, kind of the lowdown, what to watch out for in such a situation, and the other one was the hack project. Watch out for. What to watch out for? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is this is my previous uh, my previous my, my previous uh, kind of full time uh, full time project. Uh, it was for uh, I was working at an agency called B12 for uh, for an internal. Uh, it was actually a kind of web-based operating system for Volkswagen. So uh, what, we, what we had over there is uh, we basically needed to, to create a, 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 a web-based framework for other people to, to put applications in. So this is what, we, what you see on the, on the outside is the shell. And what you see inside the apps, inside the little apps, uh, you can also like the, the, you can also expand the widgets to, to make them full screen. Uh, these are 
micro apps which are developed by people who we have absolutely no, nothing nothing to do with. Yeah, it's like we're creating the we're creating Android and shipping it out for other people to create apps for the, for that Android. But all all of that inside in, inside a single browser application. So of course the the initial uh, the initial idea was to use iframes and the uh, and here we see one of them where where, where it actually well the performance of this was of course uh, was of course mediocre because you basically load twenty instances of a browser instead of a single application and the other problem was was something that also uh, Spotify ran into uh, in its early days because they also they they've also been digging a very similar approach where they inside inside a big company they have like many very little teams which operate like little startups shipping little apps. And those apps are stitched together into a single experience. But as you can see, this is like a, an, a really early version of, of Spotify, where each of these like screens look like looks like a like a completely different world. So the the, the typography, the uh, the uh, the line spacings, uh, the the font sizes, the styling of those different of those different bits. This is kind of a very different story in in in, in, in different places. So. Uh, what we what we actually figured out at uh, Studio Bits Fifth is that we need uh, uh, a, a, a style guide to power all these apps, but uh, but we need to, to to ship it in a way which allows people to pick any any uh, technology. So it's really easy to create a style guide in React. It's really easy to create well. It's well. It's so, sort of easy to create a style guide for for Angular. Uh, or for any well, or for Elm, but but it's not uh, that trivial to to create a style guide which can be consumed by any kind of technology out, out there. So uh, here's here's what we uh, what we uh, ended up with. So basically, it's 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 very uh, it's very yeah. As I said, it's very low tech. Like this is all uh, we're, we're like utilizing the power of classes and check boxes and radio buttons. Uh, to, to the very like to the very limits, we actually created a, a framework for uh, for for creating these kinds of these kinds of uh, low tech style guides. But we also, unfortunately, that one is not is not open source. But the the, int the interesting bit is how to, how uh, how to handle things which you can't uh, which you can't just uh, use classes and checkboxes for. For example, there's uh, yeah so. Uh, there are these select boxes. This is the kind of eternal problem of of web developers to recreate the select box in a, in a very like native feeling. Uh, <laughs> Accessible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah, and how to do this in a, in a in a manner which can be which can be consumed in in any technology. And this part of this part of the, the style guide, uh, fortunately, is is. Uh, uh, open source. I uh, you will get the links uh, afterwards. So uh, so basically, we've, we've modeled this, uh, including all the all the keyboard uh, inter uh, keyboard interaction, sort of one one to one after what we saw in Chrome, except for the type to search. This is something that we uh, that I, uh, well. I left the company before we did that, and the the others kind of didn't follow up, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, interestingly, uh, it's also a similar approach that that uh, that uh, allowed that. So, so we also used uh, custom elements for this. Uh, we couldn't use any other part of the web component specification because they are they are still unstable and really hard to polyfill. But uh, but this was actually an asset for us because we were we needed to, to, to use very like only the simplest the simplest tools available. So. If you if you look inside uh, this, you you just get a uh, uh, yeah an an ordered list of list elements. It kind of it's it's kind of similar to the output of of uh, jQuery plugins back in the day, but except that it's it's all like explicit, and you need to create the markup uh, yourself. And what uh, what what we find found out is that uh, the uh, the result is also very yeah, extremely accessible. Accessible. That's that, that I must that I must say, because uh, this is what what the thing looks like when the JavaScript does not like load. For example, due to due, due to a network failure or 
because it just comes in later than the CSS. The CSS goes preloaded uh, previously, and, and the, the JavaScript streams in later. So basically, you can use the whole the whole thing. It's just not as nice as it as it is with JavaScript. So it's just a sort of uh, degradation. Uh, you, you don't get the keyboard navigation. You don't get the automatic closing of this stuff. Uh, but interestingly, uh, this is what you get when the CSS does not kick, kick in. So you can also you can also uh, use the thing actually. Yeah, it's 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 like a user sees this and understands how to how to how to do this stuff. Yeah, here, here you can also kind of preview how uh, how the thing uh, behaves, how, how the pure JavaScript. Uh, what, what the pure JavaScript does. So to toggle the, the, the visibility of it, I'll just make it a little bit uh, bigger. Uh, we've got a checkbox, uh, and uh, picking the, the option is a, is a radio button, because only one uh, option can be picked. Um, so yeah, uh, live demo <laughs> again. Uh, this is the one that we didn't manage. To see, but yeah. So I just I just wanted to sum up what what we uh, what we just saw. So basically, this is a, a world like this where uh, every kind of every uh, micro app, every little team which is responsible for shipping for shipping uh, uh, one of those like little parts of, of an application. It's a world where I'd I'd, I'd really love to lo love to live. Yeah, where. Every uh, every team, if it makes sense from a from a from bu from a business perspective, and it often does, uh, every team is kind of free to pick the technology that the, the tool that suits the uh, the challenge best. Yeah, where also uh, when when hiring developers, you, you're not only kind of constrained to to to, to the to the technology that you're currently using, and we all know how difficult it is to find good React developers nowadays. So with a with a uh, with a flexible code base like this, you can even though the application is kind of running and the code is running in production, you can you can adjust to the current state of the market. Yeah, where the uh, where the most brilliant developers are at the moment, and and where kind of the market isn't as as tight as it is with uh, with uh, with React nowadays. Uh, it's also uh, for users. This also means. Uh, we can uh, teams, the product teams can react to their needs uh, earlier because uh, yeah, imagine uh, imagine a situation where you're working on a huge platform, like for example this uh, this uh, management system for Volkswagen, yeah, where uh, you've got like uh, 40 different apps, a team which covers 40 different apps for different kinds of users. Imagine the kind of hierarchy you need you you would need to create. To hold all this stuff in place, and and to be able to ship things efficiently, yeah. But if we if we treat every single of these apps as a different experience with a different team, which has a who has a direct like a direct uh, relationship with the with the users who can gather feedback directly, we can ship things and react to the to to, to the needs a lot a lot faster, yeah. Uh, and also from a business perspective, this this also means. Just as Amazon, uh, just as the Amazon story shows us, when the market changes, we can change our uh, our uh, company profile very, very easily. So thank you so much, and I'm hoping for some tricky questions. <laughs> okay, uh, can you repeat the questions? Can you hear them? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Uh, yeah. Is it possible to reuse dependencies between micro apps? So, for example, if you have two React applications, mm -hmm. you have to load those uh, React dependencies twice in the browser? Or is it possible to say, okay, those both uh, micro apps use React, just load it once and reuse it in those those micro apps? Uh, yeah, that's an, that's an amazing question. So the question was, uh, what it looks like with uh, dependencies which are shared across apps. So the way we uh, w the solution we've come up with is uh, it's uh, a little bit different in terms of uh, from uh, from the experiment in terms of what the app shell looks like. So with, with uh, in our situation, the app shell is a very slim layer of uh, React, and the uh, the containers for those uh, micro applications for those micro apps. 
are not custom elements, but they are React components. So in this setup, it's uh, it's really easy to use to use Webpack for uh, dependency management, and and Webpack takes takes care of this. Also, when using a monorepo, just like uh, just as we are, it's also very easy to enforce that every single micro app is using the same version of a dependency. So it's not like you need to pull pull down React. Uh, uh, 0 0.15, then uh, or React 15, then React 0 0.14, and and so on. Yeah, so uh, this is what we are doing to, to to mitigate this. But there are also many other uh, options out there. So uh, Polymer is kind of based on custom elements, and they have a very different dependency management system, which also kind of works. Uh, so there are different solutions out there. If you communicate between these micro apps, which you do mm -hmm. in the first example, um, like basically you, you set up a contract how communication happens, so yep. yeah. So the, what what were any downsides, upsides, the hard decisions you had to make there? Yeah. So so the question was when uh, apps communicate between each other, you need to set up a contract as for. Uh, how how they uh, w what it looks like. So, for us, it's 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 very early days of this of this new structure. So it's like an experiment that I, I showed you, and we're just we're just uh, implementing this stuff uh, in our case. But because we, we are using uh, React components as containers for these micro apps, even though the, the, there can be kind of any technology inside the React component, uh, uh, you can we can. Uh, we can write flow types for this, so so it's uh, so the contract is enforced at at app level. It's just the responsibility of of, of uh, the engineers inside the crew to, uh, to 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 kind of adhere to that to that contract. And the question was uh, how you enforce the contract between uh, of the shape of the data exchange between apps. So now the contract is written in React. Uh, excuse me. Can you can you repeat the question? The contract is written in React in this case. Yeah, the contract is written in in Flow, but but uh, Flow hooks into React. Yes, that's true. Uh, yeah. So I will just I would like to follow up. Uh, I think I'm confused right now. <laughs> yeah, because, okay. Uh, because the examples you showed, like you mixed up some web components or like custom element stuff that are basically separated apps mm -hmm. uh, with some really thin layer of like some native, like let's say vanilla JavaScript. Like mm -hmm. this. Yep. Uh, yeah, so there's like no React when you, when, when you start, when you bootstrap your app, right? And then you have some multiple React apps. And this is why I think we had like all the, these questions. Yep. But then you say like in, in your app, you're using React as a, Basically, as a framework for all these micro apps, is it correct? Yes, that's. Uh, so that's, this is where I also got confused. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so you still use like because you still use the the, the, the whole React app on uh, top of all this micro. So you basically you you leveraging component based approach in this case. It's not like microservices. Uh, yes, it's kind of. Uh, so so the question was uh, about uh, whether. Our situation is is, is actually a, uh, a a a React app with uh, discrete components, uh, which are kind of top level rather than the uh, the other ones. Yes, is that, is that correct? Did I? Is it component component based approach or is it really microservice? Like, what's the difference between in, in your example? I saw the difference, but now I'm I'm really done getting it because you you, you mentioned like React app that is on top. So my question is. Uh, is it like uh, are, you, are you referring to component component based approach, or are you referring to microservices approach where you can mix and match different technologies? Yeah. So uh, uh, so yeah, the question was uh, <laughs> what I what I said previously. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what's what's the, what, what's the bootstrapping code? And so what like what's the cost of it's really doing like between this, right. all the main microservices? Yeah. Well. yeah so so. Uh, uh, as I as I kind of mentioned previously, it's the it's the uh, the way of working which which counts and not not the platform because the platform is kind of easily interchangeable. Similar to web goods to, to, to actual microservices, they can be uh, they can be web services communicating with each other through a REST API over HTTP, or they can be 
a cluster of like uh, of like little programs communicating uh, through RabbitMQ, for example, just as just as we are do, we are doing. And it's the same the, the same approach here. What 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 uh, what what actually counts is that we don't uh, our team is split up into little uh, into little. Uh, like sub teams, each of those teams are, is is responsible for a single micro app, and the choice of technology that they are that they are uh, that they are picking, this is uh, this is this does not have to be the same technology as the as as the app shell. So we, we, we're uh, we're enforcing at the moment that the the container for this for this micro app, this is a, a React compo component, and a Re React component in reality. Uh, it, it, it works very similarly to, to well, it's, it's actually kind of one-to-one -one the same thing as the, uh, as the custom elements that I showed you. So, so it, uh, at, with custom elements, you, you, have, uh, you have like a much broader spectrum of, of, of different ways of using them. So you can use them in, imperatively. You can, you, you can uh, wire up two-way two data binding like Angular, but we, in those examples that I, I showed you in, the, in that experiment, after some experimentation, we, we uh, noticed that it works best, at least for us, uh, when we use them exactly like React. So uh, a custom element uh, takes, uh, can, can only take uh, attributes, uh, and uh, it does not update the attributes itself, but, uh, but uh, uh, communicates back through callbacks through through custom events, which are uh, well, basically the the, the same thing. So uh, the the mechanism uh, in the exam in the examples is uh, is kind of one to one the same as how React works minus minus uh, the virtual DOM machine, which 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 you have to manage yourself in this in this case as you as you saw in the app shell vanilla JS approach. Yeah. Does does that answer your question? Because I, I, I do realize it's it's a kind of uh, uh, it's a kind of uh, situation where you need to understand the idea behind the, behind uh, the whole system rather than so concentrate on the. Understand is like how you manage to create a unified unified data flow in your basically. So if you have a micro app. That has its internal state. You still have like the the, the like to me the, the biggest problem of any reactive is like how you manage your, your state you know, on a global mm -hmm. level. So people, uh, but these components don't get uh, into the swing state. So you have to somehow have a something on top of all of them that manage this state, right? Yes. My question: How do you? How do you manage your state? Let's, let's make it. With, okay. Let's the question. The question is. This, the question is how. For all of these micro apps, micro apps. Okay. Yeah. So the question is how we manage the state across those micro apps and not only inside those micro apps. This is something that we that was wasn't there in the in the in the example. How uh, what we uh, our approach is. Act, this is this is one of the the open source. Well, the the, the libraries, the internal libraries that we have, uh, which which we are planning to open source. It's a it's a uh, it's a data fetching co uh, layer called recall, which is basically like a like an in app uh, like an in in app uh, database, which which uh, fetches things from uh, from uh, from the server, uh, ca caches these things, and the core of recall is also isn't React specific. It's it's uh, it does have adapters. It uh, it, it uh, to to work with different with different uh, technologies. So at, at the moment we're kind of transitioning into this. So we only have the React adapter, but the core is not React specific, and we can kind of stick an Elm adapter on top of this. We can stick an Angular adapter on top of this, and uh, and this is the only thing that we want to manage across the whole app. Uh, the uh, the other kinds of state are uh, well the only other way. Apps can uh, micro apps can share state is through these attributes that you saw uh, that, that you saw in the demo, or through props in uh, in the in the in the uh, in the world where a React component is is the the container for this. Uh, through events or callbacks. Okay. Thank you.
Let's wrap it up. Cool. Thank you so much. Bye.